Three, two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Barry Chapel coming to you live from Primetime Shopping Network. I got a great show. I even put on my Facebook page, this is Halloween come early. It's going to be a pre-Halloween sale. And I even made this comment, and I don't regret it, Wilson. I don't, no matter how many shock treatments they give me. I don't regret it. Some of the deals I'm going to give tonight, you, if you miss out on them, you're going to be haunted. Haunted. <laughs> Till the end of the year, at least. So I got some great deals. But I'm having an unlucky streak here today, Wilson. I don't know who I offended. Unlucky. All right. Let me show you this on the camera. You just hold that shot. On my big toe. Right here, my big toe. I ripped the toenail off. I didn't do it on purpose, it was an accident. And Wilson, it hurt. So I'm thinking, all right, I can live with that because it's the second toenail on that side that ripped off. But then you know what happened, Wilson? I'll tell you what happened. I'm driving in to work, chewing with my nicotine gum, and my tooth came out. Yes, my dental implant tooth, gone. I have it, I didn't swallow it. I have it. So I, I, I'm having an unlucky day, Wilson. Unlucky, so I have an idea. Uh, I think a good one. One of the greatest artists I've ever met is Michael Schofield. Here is an original Michael Schofield. That is oil on canvas. That is the Michael Schofield that sold paintings for Hubs Historical. Here's one for $48,500, Wilson. The same Michael Schofield that is in the billion, with a B, Patty, billion dollar Arm and Hammer collection. You know what Arm and Hammer used to make? Still do? Baking powder. Yes. Yes, Ashley, I had to bring it up. That's what keeps fooling Ashley. She keeps buying what she thinks is cocaine, but it's, but it's baking powder. Will you explain to her, Juliet? You, you should test it first. <laughs> What'd you tell her, Pay? What? I did eat your muffin. You didn't put any. You didn't put any baking soda that you think is cocaine in my muffin, did you? Forty-eight thousand. Now, Michael Schofield has sold many originals. This is a unique one of a. This is a one of a kind, hand painted by. He's seventy-three. He's going to be seventy-four on October tenth, or maybe he's seventy-four. He's going to be seventy-five. Near death. No, he's not. He's going strong. But that's what they always tell you before you go near death, right, Wilson? Yeah. If I had a buck for everybody, said, oh, you're looking great at the doctor's office. You got another 10 years. Walks out, shut the door, boom. I was wrong. No. Here's what I'm going to do. In honor of my unlucky day, Matt, this is item number BC2238. I am going to start this painting. Yeah, you know what I'm going to start this at? What? Uh, uh, Lamada, the boxer. Used to call the hard luck round the 13th, Jake LaMotta. I'm going to start this at 1300 to open. I'm going to lose money if somebody takes me up on my unlucky number. Oh, yeah, yeah, 1300 to open. 
$100 increments once we get the open. This is the Michael Schofield, whose mother on his, on his grandmother's side is Potawatomi Indian, Native American. Wilson, did you ever do anything mean to the Potawatomi tribe? I'm not talking about this life. I'm talking about your last life. There's a correct answer for that. I'm not sure. Now look at this. This is a $25,000 Michael Schofield original. He was official golf artist for PGA West. He is in the billion dollar Arm and Hammer collection. And that is just absolutely stunning. 1300 to open. Now, Ashley, I got a Michael Schofield over there where the waves are crushing upon the rocks. Yes, and you know what happens, Wilson? If the waves crash upon the rocks for long enough, Switch them. You can do a live switch. I have faith in you. What's this code? No, no, no. It's 2240. <laughs> what will happen over eons if the waves keep crashing on that rock? It'll erode. Erosion! Uh, you are right. Somebody give Ashley a muffin. And she got it right. You know, I, I, I spent yesterday with Oleg Javetin and I went to the dog park with him because I took him, I said, Oleg, my dog's acting weird. And we drove about a mile and a half from where I live to a dog park. He got there, he goes, ooh, this is huge. I said, he says, your dog like this. I said, yeah. Ginger likes it. Now, this is a painting I would usually have up for $3,500. And many of them were up for even more. But because of my unlucky streak today, what is this painting going to be up for, Patty? $1,300 to open. You're talking about $1,300 on a $25,000 Michael Schofield. He has mixed the colors perfect. He is in the Arm and Hammer billion dollar art collection. He sold a triptych, three of his abstract paintings, to a fairly well-known, I would say billionaire, the three paintings for $186,000 recently. All right, I can see they're still undecided. Ashley, pick another Michael Schofield. But pick the nicest one of the lot. They are all superb. Hi, Barry Chapel. Hey, I'm a picture in a picture. Now watch this, Matt. Shrink this picture into my head so I get elongated. Can you do that? Don't, don't even try. <laughs> so, hey, how's it going? How many toenails do you have? Maybe one. That's it? Yeah. I have nine. I used to have ten. Oh, yeah? Big toe, toenail. Got ripped out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How many teeth do you have on this side? This side? Uh, I would say five. I got less than that because I lost a tooth and a toenail. 
That's why I'm guarding my tongue. I don't want to lose a tongue, a toenail, and a tooth. That would be tough luck. I'm going to change this out of All right, here you go. Here comes Ashley. Autumn's calling. Was it? Autumn's calling. Autumn's calling. And Wilson, what type of painting would Autumn's call calling be? A tomino. A tom. No. A tom. No. A tom. No. What am I saying wrong? A tom. No. A tom. No. A tom. No. And how many years did you go to school to learn that? And you couldn't just say, it's an autumn scene? <laughs> oh, this is a beautiful autumnal painting. Did I say it right? This is 25. I don't think I can do it. This is 3,500. This is one of his all-time greats. I, I'm going to try it one more time. The hard luck na number. Jake LaMotta's hard luck number 13. 1,300 to open. The fought, fight got called in the 13th round against Sugar Ray Leonard. But you know what, Wilson? He didn't go down. He took a beating that messed him up for life. And he kept saying, you see, Ray, I didn't go down. I didn't go down because I want to own an autumnal painting from Barry Chappell's Fight Art Showcase. At 1300 All right, Ashley. Pull out. Tell you what, before this, Matthew. Do people only call him that when he's in trouble? He said yes. He's nodding yes. Matt. How about Matley? Do you like Matley? No? Just Matt? Matt, can you play my amazing documentary film on the original Michael Schofield? Take a look at this when Matt is ready to run it. I'm Michael Schofield. I'm a, uh, an impressionist landscape artist. Landscapes are probably what I enjoy doing the most. And I think one of the reasons I enjoy doing what I do is because I enjoy being in nature. Landscapes to me speaks to, uh, speaks to who and what I am. I enjoy the outside. I love looking at different parts of the country. Every different part of the country is, is unique in its area. Landscapes are, are what I enjoy painting more than anything else. When I'm looking at a landscape, the first thing I do is to see the depth of the piece and how I'm gonna create the depth. How am I gonna create the foreground and the middle ground and the, and the background? And what it is that I'm gonna to have to do in order to jump over the hurdles it's gonna take in order to get that particular scene on, on canvas. Do I frame it right to left? Do I move these trees here? Do I? Do I bring a brook through the center of the piece? Do I bring it from left to right? You know, what's intriguing about this particular scene? Taking out all of the small details that don't make any sense and just getting the essence of the piece, that's what I do. That's what I envision when I first see the, the landscape. I think an artist's job is to interpret what the creator has laid out for us. We're just basically taking snapshots of that, interpreting, putting in our own interpretation of it, our own feelings, our own emotion, and then presenting that to the viewers or to the public. That's art to me. So it really is just a, it's a statement of, 
of what we are and who we are, and it's translated through, in my case, landscapes. The idea of becoming an artist um, didn't really hit until high school. And it was one of those rainy days when the music instructor was filling in for the English teacher that couldn't make it to, to school. So he, um, he whipped out his watercolor um, palette and, and paints and a piece of watercolor paper and did a demonstration um, right in the class. And that was his way of filling in for, for the teacher. And well, I watched him do that. And I, I still remember what he painted. He painted an old railroad ties and some water in between the ties and a couple of trees above it and reflecting in the water. And I thought, wow, that's, I really, that's what I want to do. Your life changes quickly, you know, and, your, and the direction changes quickly. Um, and then I think a lot of it is just following the path. Uh, we don't choose our career, it chooses us. I think that's very true. Uh, I think as long as you keep moving, that, that career will catch up to you, or you'll, you'll find the right, the right spot to walk into, or the right, the right uh, position to be in at the right time. You know, the doors open, you walk through them, see, what, see what's on the other side. I did a couple of one-man shows down in Florida. I think probably one of the more interesting one was what I did in Cleveland, a real, real wet, cold, snowy night. I really didn't think that I would have anybody show up for the show because it was so cold and miserable. We ended up having 1,100 people show up for the for the uh, for the event. We sold almost everything in the in the uh, the entire show, and the, the party didn't stop until about one, two o'clock in the morning. And uh, those were fun. We had a lot of people show up in those, in those particular, in those days. All throughout Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia. I did that for probably 10 years. There was a lot of shows. The most posters I think I had in one particular catalog was um, about 25. Back in the 90s, I think there was there was a few catalog companies that had uh, 10 or 15, but I think um, Editions Limited had uh, up to about 25 pieces. Interestingly enough, some of the pieces are still in catalogs dating back into the into the early 90s. There, and then you start to realize that you know all the millions of posters you're, you're selling happen to find their way in front of the public and. I think that's when you start to realize that uh, you're actually fairly famous in this, in this game. Well, I spent 10 years in, in Nashville, in that area. And I think a lot of the subject matter that I, that I paint today comes out of that era and out of that area. Um, Tennessee and Kentucky and Alabama, Mississippi, and even upstate New York. I love that area up there. You know, big pines, the big beech trees, the big birches. I think a lot of that uh, that I do today is reminiscent of those areas and of that subject matter. I paint in California quite a bit too, um, like like today. Um, those, those areas I think are what I enjoy painting the most.
of the more difficult things is painting on location. A lot of people say, well, you got everything right in front of you. Well, you have too much in front of you. The artist has to take all of the elements, eliminate the things you don't need in the painting, and just paint the things that you do need. And you have to deal with the light changing. It changes rapidly. You're painting the shadows on one tree and all of a sudden they're not there anymore. So you have to take a mental snapshot of the area that you're looking at and then paint that because it's going to change five minutes from now. I think my paintings, they tell hope and they tell adventure and mystery and romance and I've been fortunate, really fortunate, to paint something that people really enjoy and, and feel and get uh, inspired from and fall in love with. And I like the growing aspect of becoming a better and better artist. Uh, I don't think you ever arrive as an artist. I think you're always arriving. You're eventually going to get there. I think eventually um, I'll, I'll get to a point where I feel comfortable with the work. I don't think I'll ever be satisfied completely with it. I like the idea that somebody can see one of my paintings and see a part of nature that they've been in, a place that they, they're familiar with, a scene that they know from, from childhood or some, some time in a vacation, something like that. That's when I feel like what I do actually rings home. That's important to me. They can actually relate to the landscape. So um, communication between the painter and the, the viewer is what's important. Folks, that was a film I made on Michael Schofield. He, his grandmother was Native American. Michael uh, spent a lot of time in Florida, but he moved all throughout the country. He has sold millions of posters. And he has this ability to make color just dance. And the reason I'm starting at 1300 most of these were 2500 to open. I'm losing money on them. But this morning I got up and the, after it, my toenail on this foot finally grew back, it finally grew back, I ripped it off by accident. And it hurt mildly. And uh, then I'm driving to the studio, chewing on my nicotine gum, and my tooth breaks off, an implant, boom. Fortunately, I didn't swallow it. So I'm having a weird day. So I decided the only hard luck number I can think of is 13 because Jake LaMotta, the boxer, they used to, when he would fight, they'd call it the hard luck round because he lost a couple fights in the 13th round. One to Sugar Ray Leonard, where Sugar Ray beat the bejesus out of him. And he's, they're carrying him off. And he goes, and he's bleeding everywhere. I didn't go down, Ray. I didn't go down. That's why they call it the hard luck round. This is a hard luck day for me. 1,300 to open. And this is as good as it gets. Let's show him a couple more. I'm going to show every Schofield I got. This $1,300 price is only, we already showed that, right? No, not yet. Let's show them the ocean. <laughs> Back to the ocean. Yes. Thank you. Two, two, one, two. Two, two, one, two. I don't know if you know this, Ashley, but a depressed man once rode over a barrel 
over Niagara Falls. And he lived. And he was so happy, he, he didn't want to kill himself anymore. Then on the drive home, he got hit by a bus. And that killed, no, he didn't get hit by a bus. But he did live. Somebody, <laughs> I'm just, Oh, this next one. At 1300 to open, Ashley, if that next one doesn't sell, if it doesn't sell, I'm going to pull out your tooth. Oh, shoot, from the back? Ah, uh, I don't care. Uh, Wilson, you got the pliers? Okay, so hey, Wilson, you saw that in the Tom Hanks movie when he lost you. Tom Hanks had to pull his own tooth out, and you were there, Wilson. This, to me, is one of the most remarkable Michael Schofields I've ever seen. This right here, the way he blends those colors, it is off the chart. This is one that I turned down. Just so you know, I turned down, I had up at 3,500 and somebody offered me 29 or 27. I turned it down. This is one of the, once in a while you see something, like Michael's always great art, but you see something, you go, that is unbelievable. At $1,300 to open on this Michael Schofield. Two, two, one, four. Yes, that is a perfect Schofield at $1,300 to open. I do not see the downside. I've watched Michael paint every now and then, unbelievable. This one, painted in 2022, has got to sell. What do you think, Spider-Man? Hang on, Spider-Man saying something. Really? I agree. Please don't do that. Spider-Man right here, Wilson, said he likes it so much he was getting ready to shoot the spider web right out of his hands to grab the painting. And I ask him, please don't do that. Yeah. What do you mean you're not sure you can avoid doing it? Well, I'm gonna move you over then. Yeah, and if you don't know if you're gonna... What do you call that when Spider-Man shoots spider webs out of his wrist? What do you call that? No, that's his name, but what do you call that process? Wilson, Mr. Autominal, you got to have the word for when Spider-Man shoots spider webs out of his wrist. Wrist. What is he doing? What is he shooting? Web. It's what? Web. Yeah. Wrist web. Spider-Man is using, uh, say it again now, Patty. No, wrist web. Wrist web to secure the most beautiful Schofield. That is truly one of the greatest ones I've ever seen at 1300. And I only have two more to show you, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, so a web shooter? A web shooter. Who says that? Web shooter. Question is, I have three left. Yeah, the baby's available. I'm going to hand you this one. On this one? No, I am going to psychically transmit it to them. Okay. All right, Matt, greater than one and less than three. Two. Yes. 
Again, Mac, greater than one than less than three. Two. Greater than three and less than five. Four. And less than four? Three. Yes. Two, two, four, three. Two, two, four, three. Oh, this is stunning. $1,300 to open. The hard luck number on a very good luck painting. And that's as low as it's getting, folks. $1,300. I'm losing money at $1,300. I just wanted to show you some amazing Michael Schofields to get the day going better. I have two Michael Schofields left, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. One and a baby. One a baby. Yeah. How do you know that's a baby and the rest aren't just giants? Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Let's go with the the giant then the baby. Okay, we'll save the baby for yeah, but whatever you do, Ashley, yeah. don't throw the baby out with the what? The bath water. <laughs> Don't throw the baby out with the trash. <laughs> I hadn't heard that one before. <laughs> Wait, where's oh two two one five? Two two one five. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, according to Ashley, whatever you do in life, don't throw the baby out with the trash. It's bath water. Remember the baby Navarro? Yeah, I didn't throw the baby Navarro out with the trash. No, we did that. Look at this, at 1300 to open, you can't go wrong. No one has opened. And I got a baby Schofield. And Ashley, you had a couple of paintings over there, little etchings. Yes. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's move this one. Let's put the clean, not thrown out with the bathwater baby here. The baby Schofield. Baby Schofield here. 2216. Watch this. Just to see if the phones are working. $500 to open. Below cost. Everything's been below cost. $500 to open. $100 increments once we get it. You wouldn't throw that painting out with the trash, would you? No, sir. Who doesn't? You don't compete with the customers? No. I don't either. Folks, that would have been the deal of a lifetime. That's 17500 online uh, to own an original Michael Schofield. Now, Ashley, you know that stuff you were saying I have over there, the small etchings? Yes. Yeah. Grab one. Grab the one you like the best. Well, no, Is this going to go with the baby Schofield? No. It's going to go with, here, let me see it. Yeah, anybody that buys, yeah, that's Winnie the Pooh. Anybody that buys a Schofield 2201. 2201 gets a Winnie the Pooh etching. And let me see who did it. Oh, it's coming up. 2201 on the graphics. Wasn't this for like, uh, this was this pretty famous guy that did that. Uh, Matt, 2201. Ah, those are like 1200 bucks. What is it? So what in Regis? 
Solar and riser. Solar and riser. So what? Soa. Soa and riser. Hand me that unbelievable Schofield over there, too. Yeah. That one that cannot be replaced. What? They want to get the open on. We have the open on the baby Schofield. It's right here. Hey, Ashley, if they buy the baby Schofield, we have the open. They get this too. 500 has been bid. You get a. You get a Schofield and a Winnie the Pooh. We have 500 looking for six. $100 increments. What does Pooh Bear say all the time? What does Winnie the Pooh say? I'm thinking of Fred Flintstone or what? Hey, boo boo. Let's get another. All right, 500 going once. 500 going twice. You know what? Pooh, hold on. Pooh said, Winnie the Pooh said, people say nothing is impossible, but I do nothing every day. <laughs> people say nothing, but it's, but it, uh, is it possible because I do nothing all day? 500 once, 500 twice, sold to Juliet's customer. You got it. Now, pull up. That, yeah, that's the most beautiful Schofield I have ever seen in a long time. Do you have another one of those etchings? I do, I do. Now, whoever buy this is 1300 to open. This to me is one of the greatest Schofields I have ever seen. Anybody that buys this also. It's you in love with the Schofield. It's goofy. It's Pluto. That's, isn't that, that's Pluto, you're right. Now put it up here, put it up here, yeah. You get Pluto. Oh, that is so cute. That's how Barry looks at the Schofield. <laughs> yes. I don't know if I pant when I see it like that, <laughs> Ashley, but, <laughs> but I, I think it's a very nice painting. Yeah, that kind of ended my art career. I just had to stop panting every time I saw a painting. This is 600, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 1300 to open on six, no, uh, 2214. 1300. That is, a, that is one of the nicest large Schofields. And you are getting a rare etching above it. Oh, that's unbelievable. At thirteen hundred dollars, the etching is cool, but that painting is one of the most glorious Schofields oh, okay. I've ever seen him paint. Oh yeah, he, he took it out. He took it off and took up the Yeah, they they got it. If I, uh, they yeah. they got the last one right. This is a different one on this one. Yes. No open once. No open twice. Fair and final. No open. Okay, that Schofield is down for the count. 
Now here's what I'm going to do just for a second. I'm going to put Spider-Man up. Can't believe that Schofield didn't go bye-bye. This was done. By E.M. Zacks. And Ashley, yeah. the cert on the back of this is for a different painting. <laughs> now, E.M. Zacks, well, here are some comps on E.M. Zacks. And he is a major artist. Let me just show you. Here on the Maryland Polymorph 5600. Look at this. This is Art World News, a full story. On the pop art of E.M. Zacks. And this is an original mixed medium collage. Look at this. Yeah, they get Pluto. Okay, hold on. I'm going to put it back up, okay? Okay. Wait, leave Spider-Man up. All right, here is Spider-Man. Now, Wilson, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, who is that? Thank you, Tom. And does Tom notice? Now, Wilson, I need to go back a little bit. With my mask on, I look like Spider-Man. You gotta go like this. Like this, look. That's not how you do it. Yes, it is. Look at him right here. All right, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm surprised Ashley can do that. Oh, these are seven and eight thousand. I'll tell you what I can do on this. Oh, I'm gonna give someone a deal of a lifetime. This is a unique original, and these are going for eight, nine, ten, eleven thousand. He's got a big meeting with Park West about being on the cruise ships. Tell you what I'll do. Seventeen hundred to open. Seventeen hundred to open. Oh, that's too cheap. Seventeen hundred on the largest Spider Man. Look at that. And he's got his choice. I got Superman, Spider Man, and the Joker. And folks, these. Hang on, hang on. I, I want to show you something here. I want to show you a few things about. Oh. No, I'm just going to put it right here. Yeah. Well, you've already tried to grab Superman. <laughs> yeah. And didn't I promise her I wouldn't mention that, Patty? Yeah. Well. Come in here late night, she's fondling Superman. <laughs> <laughs> These are my three extra large 
I mean, collaged. He Jackson Pollocks him with the paint on top. Superman is like high and low relief. Look how he changes the, uh, he indents and dents part of the Superman. These are all 9, 10, 11 grand. And you know as we speak, they got a cert on the back from EM Zacks. They're all signed, but they are meeting with Park West trying to get Zacks on the cruise ships. And any of them, I'm giving him the choice of the litter. Two what? And then two two four six. Two two four five and two two four six. I have three of the largest Zacks I have come across in a while. I like the Joker. See, Wilson, that green hair works on the Joker. It just doesn't work for you. I don't mean to be mean. Patty, did you comment on Wilson's green hair? I think it looks lovely. You think it looks lovely? Ashley, does he see one he likes? These uh, EM Zacks has been meeting with Park West to be on all the cruise lines. All three. I'm going to work a deal and I've already given my best, but watch this. Oh my goodness. My phone gave me faulty directions to the studio. I had to drive through all kinds of areas. I thought I saw the Beverly Hillbillies house at one point. All right. All three. subsidizing if 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 he if he paid what the minimum was right there look at that I could do all three for that and Melvin that is a deal watch what happens to EM Zach's prices when you got Park West galleries wanting to put them on the cruise ships <whistles> and Melvin they are the best three EM Zach's I get on this planet Look at that. And can they see how there, there are recess and hills on that Superman? It's both depressed and impressed. It's really a special. What does he say? Oh, Melvin, Melvin, I'm giving deals to beat deals. Melvin, we're close. We're in the ballpark. And I'm limping around, missing a toenail and a tooth. Hey, 
They are stunning. You see how, could you explain how this Superman here, I'm sorry, uh, comes out and in at the same time? You see that right there? Let me show that this one? on the camera. If you show that at an angle, yeah, that's it. It's depressed and, in, and, and comes up and down. They are stunning. And as... Melvin, if he knows what you call the web shooter. Web shooter. I know, but there's got to be a more official name. Is there a more official name for this better than web shooter? It was never. Oh, he, oh, he doesn't know. I don't either. And what is the one metal that Superman can't play with? Yes. Don't help her. What does he say? They're stunning. I'll tell you what. Does he want all three? Let's work a deal. Let's work a deal. Where is he at? Give me your best, Melvin. Can, can camera up a little bit, Wilson? Melvin, I'm missing a toenail and a tooth. Yeah. Let's see. Let's work a deal on all three right now, Melvin. He is fixing to be in one of the biggest auction houses on sea. I mean... They're going to take a piece like this and get 12 grand for it. What's his best for all three? He, they're meeting with Park West. All three. Let's work a deal. All three. I'm off. Melvin, take care of these. They're yours. Yes, and I still have Magic Johnson. He's a big guy, Wilson. Have you ever come close to, like, Shaq? No. I'll tell you, he was a tough, a tall guy that I hung out with for a little while. In the mid 80s, late 80s, was Chuck Connors. He was a great guy. All right. All of my Zacks are gone. I have a Magic Johnson signed Zacks right here. Look at that. Magic Johnson signed the Zacks. What's the item number? Ha, you don't know, do you? You don't know. You're supposed to know these. Patty, tell her what the item number is. <laughs> you don't know it either. No, 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 it's 2198. 2198. On this. Ugh. There's Magic signing his name to this Zax. How tall is Magic Johnson, you think? Like 6'10", I mean 6'10", 6'11". Uh, what do we have this up for, Ashley? Like four or five grand, but what did, we, what did I lower it down to? Ten grand to open. You're greedy. Yeah. Greedy, greedy, greedy. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I can do.
200 to open. Oh, I get what you did there. What? 3200. I didn't, uh, you know, that slipped me, but <laughs> there is the Beckett or what, whatever. I didn't even catch it. All right. I got something I'm going to show you here. I got it right here. Hang on. I didn't lose it. I would have kept it right on top. Alcala Rosa. Hang on. Folks, look at that. That's signed by Magic Johnson. All right. All right, that's... Tell you what, here's what I am going to do. Ashley, can you... She left. Did you see that, Wilson? She just left. Oh, no, you didn't. Can you move magic? Yeah, and can you put Alcala Rosa? This is Jose Royo. This is on panel. Royo is a Spanish master painter. Two one two one. Yeah. Now, I just want to show you something. Here is the panel edition. This is number one twenty four out of one fifty. Every single Royal was sold out rare by Triad Publishing. Here's my favorite Royo of all time, Prima Lucci, a modern day Mona Lisa. On panel, it was 6,500, and that comp is from 17 years ago. Here is Bahando Hasi El Ma. Did they say it right? Panel edition, 7,500. Bahando Hasiel Ma. Yeah. My car. Okay. I'm feeling real jazz. Here, here is a smaller one. La Mandoline. Uh, is it La Mandolina? And that sold out rare 4,000. So here's what I got, folks. This is the only Royo I have left. It's a panel edition. 2121. Someone a deal on the last Royo. And in one minute. Yeah, they're all seven, eight, ten grand now. Every Royo is sold out rare. Here, watch this. Watch this. I just want to see if anybody's watching. Nine hundred dollars to open. Yeah, nine hundred dollars to open. One hundred dollars. A C note, Patty.
You know, when I was 15, Patty, I saw the late queen. Now, she was a long way away. She drove past uh, when I was in the Bahamas. She was in a very expensive car with people all around her, but I did. I had binoculars. I saw the queen. That is the last Royal, it's a panel edition, sold out rare. And I want to thank everybody. And I am going to move on. I think I have a comp for this where it's like four or five thousand for this one, but hey, it's okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Are we on Dish Network now? Oh, yes. Yeah. Camera two. Hi, Barry Chapel, coming to you live from the home of Primetime Shopping Network in Hollywood, California. And I have some great deals. I want to thank everybody. The first hour, if you're going, boy, I wish I could watch Barry. Well, Barry is on TV the first hour. And it's internet only. You, you just go to www.primetimeshopping.com, live streaming, and you can watch the show. This is my Halloween comes early show. Wilson, do you scare people on Halloween? That's mean. You scare little kids? Why would you do that? I caught Ashley trying to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I even said to her, Ashley, don't throw the baby out with the, and she says, trash? I said, no. The saying is, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. It means don't, but anyway. So this is my Halloween comes early special show. And I got to tell you something. I put on my Facebook page, at some of the prices I have tonight, if you miss out on it, you'll be haunted for the rest of the year. I have some rare coins. I have some rare art. I just got this rare coin in yesterday. Oh, you want to see something really cool? This is a tough coin to get in 6-6. That's a 1925 PCGS graded MS66. Superb gem brilliant uncirculated. This is BC2295. For some reason, you can get this in 6362. It's still rare, but when you get to 66, it just falls off the chart. There are so few of them, and I acquired two 1925. Superb gem, brilliant, uncirculated. Absence of so few bag marks. One grade higher, and it's just out of this world. I'll tell you what I can do on this. Uh, I only have two, and I will never compete with a customer. I bought these. I said, man, I'm lucky to buy these. I even showed them to Ginger. I said, but don't, Ginger's my dog. All right, yeah, list is... Uh, I gotta say, each list is, this is a rare date in 6-6. Six, six. It's something you, you, you wanna fight over. Tell you best I can do. 48.95 for either one. 4,895. 
And I got other coins, but I got a lot of great art too. And Matt, in school, you didn't like people that taught, told on people, right? You don't like narcs, do you? Well, I got I to gotta tell you, Wilson, Ashley has a problem. She was fondling, fondling my MS-70, the highest possible grade. An early release swan could get. That is one ounce of four nine fine from the Australian Mint in Perth. Look at that. Early release. Now look, let me show you the reverse. That is the late Queen of England. Look at this. It's the only one I have. Look at that. Oh, those are love swans. You notice that, Wilson? Have you ever pet a swan, Patty? Actually, I have. You pet a swan. Did the swan like getting pet? Well, I only have one of these. I also have some 1927, an MS66. I have a 1927, an MS64. But on the swan, only one I got, they're sold out, I am told. Every one in the edition is sold up. Tell you what, anybody wants it, $2,495. Oh, look at that. I want to talk to you about, yeah, I got MS64s, MS66s, but here's what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about a funny occurrence I had. It wasn't funny, it was fun. Camera two. I spent, you know what I did yesterday, Ashley? I, uh, I took my dog, Ginger, who was a little freaked out. Oleg invited me to lunch. And I said, Oleg, I thank you. You can owe me a lunch. But I, I, I got it. My dog's all freaked out because they've been doing some construction. And these two people came too close to my rescued hound dog. So oh, I said, oh, I got to take her for a walk. And he goes, where do you walk her? I said, about a mile and a half from my house, there's a dog park. And it's a big, open, fenced area of like four or five acres. And Ole goes, oh, this is fantastic. She's going to love it here. And she did. And it was a hot day, but me and Oleg sat in the shade while Ginger was doing her business, playing with other dogs. And I got a long time to talk with him. And I want to talk to you about something that he was telling me yesterday about his time. He grew up, he was born in Uzbekistan, got a four-year college degree there. And when he was 15, applied to the Surikov. Uh, didn't get in, but when he was 19, he got accepted. And the Surikov is named after uh, Sergei Ivanovich um, Surikov, who was a great Russian painter. And Oleg would tell me more stories about it. he'd paint these big battle scenes. And, o and Surikov would say, I want you, I want you, I want you. And they pay those people a ton just to stand around all day. And Oleg said, you know, it's interesting, but the camera replaced that in certain ways. But what I do, the camera can't replace. And I want to show you what he was talking about. Ashley, if you can take the Royo down, 
I want to put this painting right here up. I just want to move it to the front of the easel. All right, gently, yes. And we're going to put this right in front of the easel. Don't trip! No, I'm choking, I'm choking. <laughs> now, trip, trip. yeah. Now I want to, should I put it on the easel? Or is, it, is that too high if I put it on the easel? Too high. I don't think so. Yeah. According to Wilson, you cannot get too high. All right, well, let's turn this a little bit, what, like this. Yes. Now, I am going to walk around you, Ashley. Okay. What Oleg said, he says, why my paintings, if I do it right, become three-dimensional? Not like Agam or Vasarelli, but... He says, if you notice an area right here, or an area right there, he says, I stair-step the color, mixing in a little bit of the next color or the color before. And he says, this took me years to learn. He said he started experimenting with this in Uzbekistan, where he got his college degree in art. But if he stair steps the color just right, like right here, Wilson, where he's showing you uh, royal blue, then some silvers and some golds and some copper tones, he says if you do that just right, the painting never ends. In other words, you look at it, and Wilson, if you come out to a little wider shot, and what I'm going to do, Wilson, is get my ugly face out of the camera and move this painting away, you will look at this painting tomorrow. You can stand in front of it. You can look at it from your sofa, and you can look at it. And you go back and you look at it the next day, and he says, if I have done my job right, the story continues. Not only do I use geometrical shapes, planes, arches, triangles, uh, but because I stair-step it, the story continues. The light might be two degrees different than the, than the day before, but you will see something totally different. And, and especially like right here, Wilson, where he's stair-stepping the peach, the purple, the olives into the browns. He said that took him forever. He says, Barry, I just kept working at it and working at it and working at it. So you will see the second part of the story. You will see the same piece but it will talk to you. It will tell you the different part of the story. And Oleg is a master graduate of the Surikov, the toughest art school in Russia. Some say the toughest in the world. And Oleg got a master's degree from the Surikov. This is one how many? I got six, right? Six, yeah. And this, to me, is a masterpiece. Oleg tells me, and he's not bashful about it, he's not bragging, he's not boisterous about it at all. I, I, I mean, I talk to him, and he's petting Ginger. My dog likes him. Yeah, the other three people that tried to bite him, well, to, to, to hear the police report, their fingers will grow back. But no, no, no. But my dog likes Oleg. He's got a great way. Look at that lime green at the bottom where the hand comes out. Right here. You see that, Wilson? All of that is by design to invoke a reaction will let the story continue. And what Oleg does is he textures. 
That is a texture he puts on that takes weeks to do right. And you got an eye in an eye. And look at these, this lady's green brown eyes there. Look at him. Go right into her eyes. Oleg will tell you if he did his work right, she will tell you a story. She will talk to you. Now I want to show you what most people have paid for Oleg's. Oleg is a unique guy. He has dual citizenship. He uh, uh, U.S. citizenship. He's obviously Russian born. Well, Uzbekistan born. But just to show you, let me give, give me one second. This is the first time I met Oleg on December 4th, 2006. And it was a great day. He was telling me stories then. He used to work for Collector's Editions. And I had bought out a lot of Collector's Editions work. And I kept asking him, where is Oleg? He says, he's in, he's in Russia. I go, what part of Russia? Oh, he used to live in Moscow, but I think he's back in Uzbekistan, which he wasn't. But I finally tracked him down. He was living in Southern California, and we became friends. But just to show you, here is a quote from nine years ago on Sailor's Heart that sold for $95,000. Oleg... And was one of the valedictorians of his class. The girl that came in second, Oleg and her, formed a little business. When the pandemic hit, he, he moved back to Moscow where he was getting $250,000 down payment for each commission. That's how famous Oleg is. Here is an Oleg... Untitled from 2006, retail 104,000, asking price 95,000. I watched Oleg sell himself, no broker, no one, 10 paintings in a year. Each painting sold for at least $100,000, some a lot more. Because Oleg is one in a million. And uh, people, when I was in Russia in 2012, this is their Costco there, basically. And that was 2012. No war on the horizon. And at the time, I thought it was probably more capitalistic than America at the time. I know I had to do it. Look at that. For 69 rubles, you could buy a picture of Putin back then. I just had to do it. What was that, Patty? And... Here is Oleg with my dog, Ginger, about a month and a half ago. He likes Ginger. It's funny because he knows how to handle dogs. He didn't try and pet her. He didn't do anything. And then before you know it, Ginger's all over him. Yeah, you know. So... Folks, I could show you what a trillion dollars looks like. I could show you all kinds of stuff, but I'm not going to do that. What I want to do is tell you I have six Oleg's. This is the best I got. This is the best work he has done. And he even told me, and, 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 and the way he talks, very... You see 
why this took me so long. So, folks, this is Oleg number one. It's called the fusion. Is this is which one was his favorite? No, I think we all All right. Yeah, let's just uh, where move it gently. Yes, it's signed on the front and the back. Now, no. Ole gave both me and Ashley, this is about a, two weeks ago, uh, when he was in the studio here, a little talk on this painting. He said this was one of his favorites. We sold one of his favorites, but then he said this one, Through the Waves. And let's get it so there's no glare. I think it has. Yeah, you did it. Did I do it? Now lower it and then just move it the other way. This way? Yeah, the other way. All right, how about that? Or go like that. Hold it like this. Now, when you're holding it like that, stand on one leg. Okay. Stand on your toe of the one leg. All right, now bite down real hard on your right molar. No. Um, <laughs> okay. He says in this painting, what he aimed for, and it was hard for him to accomplish, is the wave moves. Once again, this is not Yaakov Agam, three-dimensional. This is not Victor Vassarelli, Jurgen Peters, this is him stair-stepping hundreds of different shades of colors. And look at that. you got triangles, squares, circles, arches. He said, this was, he said this was one tough painting. He said, I wanted to give this painting movement. And he said, and he lives in Hermit right now. And I ask him why, Hemet, and I ask him why, and it's a long story. He says, I can focus. I go, in it hot? He goes, Barry, it was 106. I said, yeah. He says, but I can get my work done. I can focus. And he's got air conditioning. But this, he thought, was one of the strongest paintings. And he said, he told Ashley and I, if you guys had any idea how many hours, how many days and weeks of thought went into this painting to create the movement of the wave, he said this is why it took so long. So this is Oleg number two. I got it. No, I got it. And folks, I hope you're out there tonight because you, what is this? The love dance. Love dance, yes. Six, two, six, five. Now, if you look right here, Wilson, yeah, he has totally textured the canvas. He's got a mustard yellow there. He's got seafoam green. He's got... What's that? My favorite color is seafoam green. And he has reds, oranges, teals, uh, copper tone. But this is what he specialized in at Collector's Edition. Right here, Wilson. Can you see how he's textured that? He said that is hard to do. He says people at, at, at the, at the Surikov, Surikov will mess that up. He says it's hard to do. It takes months. This is called Love Dance. It's an original. It is BC 2265. Retail, 85000 at least. And he was telling Ashley and I she's interested in this guy, and the guy's obviously interested in her, but she has to be a little provocative. 
She's got to act disinterested even though she's interested. And he, exp he expressed that. How do you show that? He says, don't look at the hand pointing away. Look at the hand down here. He said, look at the gesture of her head. I mean, this is all Oleg does. He says to, uh, to enunciate that more, look how I heavily textured it right here, and it's not textured right there. He knows every inch of what he's doing. Master graduate. To date, no American has ever graduated from the Surikov. Twelve have tried. All right. Ashley, this is Oleg number three. Hand me Oleg number four. Yes. I got it. Here is message through the rose this i could shock didn't sell the first time i showed it all of this texturing he was telling me how hard to learn how to do that right at the surikov he lays a putty down right here and he sculpts it he's got to know what he wants it to look like way before look at her eyes, she's directly staring at you, Wilson. Aww. Now, look at the lips, not moving. Eyes, deep trance. Now, look how she is cupping this rose. And look how her other hand is saying, relax, it's okay. Twelve years ago, I made the comment to Oleg, and then you paint the hands. Oh, my goodness, Ashley. He, 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 he says, you know how paint hand? How many, yeah, how many directions hand move? How many ways can it move? You ever take anatomy? No. It's not easy, paint hand, Barry. Do you paint hand? You know, I mean, he was... I got the same reaction from Oleg when I said, uh, Wilson, when I said, so you just paint the hand, is the same reaction I got from Chuck Connors uh, when I made a video with him. I said, and Chuck, I heard you were the last guy to bat for the Brooklyn Dodgers. What happened? He said, I struck out, Barry. I go, you struck out the last guy to bat? And he got a little mad at me. He goes, yes, I struck out. He said, Barry, how many hits did you get? And it's like, I get it, Chuck. I get it. I'm sorry. But anyway, Oleg uh, is very proud of his work. I have two more. This message through the rows, 36 by 36. Ashley, hand me the next two. And then I'm going to show you just a little bit of who Oleg is. Because I got a price in mind for these. Two, two, six, three. Abstract talk. Now, that hairdress is a symbol from Uzbekistan, oh. uh, from ancient folklore of Uzbekistan. Look at that. Look at the triangle, the squares, the cubes, and look, how, you know, it forms a heart-shaped pattern. This is so abstract, it's just unbelievable. Now, Ashley, who's interested in who in this painting? Look at those blue eyes just looking at her. I have one last Oleg, and Matt, let's start with Oleg 1. 
Here is the last only. This is another one that I thought would have sold so fast. <laughs> Ashley was saying this is like her favorite piece right here. And can you... This is called Hidden Feelings. And I am going to get this in the light perfectly. Look at that. It forms a cube. Look at that. He has painted this in a cube, these two folks. Yeah, I just want to get the glare off of it. Folks, this is why Oleg's go for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Look at the heavy texturing. I mean, that has just, th this piece like this, I don't even think, and it's got a face in a face for a hi hidden feeling. I don't know who could even, and next time you see Oleg, ask him why he signs it on the front and the back. No, don't say it's hard to say. So, Oleg, it's got to be easy to paint a hand then once you get done with the face. I'm so going to do that. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I could save you, Ashley. Folks, this is 95000 on a bad day. And this is item number... 2268. 2268. Hidden feelings. Hidden feelings. It's got a story on its own. Hidden feelings. Yes, yeah. There's a story, you just don't know what it is. Well, it's definitely because it's hidden. It's hidden until you find it. What do you need to find it, Wilson? A flashlight. <laughs> because you're... Now, folks, I am going to price all of these. Camera 2, and I am going to give you the best price on the planet. To me, this is one of the all-time greatest Russian artists, period, end of story, stop. I want to show you how long is part one. I'm going to see you in nine minutes. Take a look at Oleg in his own words. My name is Oleg Zhvetin. I was born in the former Soviet Union. I was born in a small town close to Tashkent city. Tashkent is a pretty big city in Central Asia. It used to be part of Soviet Empire. But when I was grow up, I never knew all of, all of that stuff. I just grew up. When I was grow up, I don't know the difference between socialism or communism or capitalism or anything else, all the political crap. I just grew up as a little boy, that's it. I, I just grew up, I love uh, to see flowers, nature, play Indians. Actually, we play American Indians. <laughs> My earliest memories, I just uh, love to draw. I, I draw on the furniture, on the walls, uh, on the paper. If I have a piece of paper, I, I just draw. My family, we have three kids. I used to have sister older than me and brother um, younger than me. My father is a simple engineer. Actually, he was chief engineer in the furniture factory. And uh, we have simple life. I'm thanks, thankful to my parents because they was educated actually behind their, their limits, behind what they need to know in their lives. We have a great library, great library. So I, I wrote a lot. I wrote a lot of American artists, American writers too. And I, I was just a simple boy, I just read a little bit, uh, 
the, the important probably we don't have a, much TV. That time, uh, Soviet Union, Russia, that time we had just three channels was controlled by government. And we have just a simple corny movies, probably not much news because they don't show news at all. Here in the United States, uh, people always stressful. Why? Because they always see the horrible news. Somebody killed here, somebody uh, has a drug overdose, somebody got a uh, car accident, terrorism here, terrorism here. Always stressful news. Back in Soviet times, no, no, no. Even if Russia has some kind of trouble like this, they never show on TV. They never show on TV. They, they always show positive news, like, let's say, uh, that farmer got thousands uh, more cows, and that's it. <laughs> the whole news like this. <laughs> If I couldn't paint, uh, I have to make somehow my living. I don't know. I would be probably homeless. But, uh, I cannot do anything else. I cannot do any. Uh, my early age, when I was like 17 years old, and I was in uh, art school, but I cannot make any money from my art. My father was chief engineer in furniture factory. So uh, one time I came to him and I told to him, look, I, I have to make some extra money for my clothes, for my girlfriends were, he said, okay, you can go in my factory and work as a simple blue color fa factory workman. You can make maybe about 200, 300 bucks a month. And I tried did that. I, I go to the factory and work about three months. And it was so hard and it's, uh, <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. It's not because it's hard labor. Uh, I, I'm not afraid hard labor. It's, uh, what uh, stopped me to do it anything, I start to understand I don't like it. I just don't like it, I start to understand I have to stick what I like. What I, I like to paint and that's it. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna be an artist. But I joined the Surikov Art Institute called Vasily Surikov Art Institute when I was um, um, 20 or 21. It's very, very difficult school to get into. Why? I tell you why. Because in Soviet times, to join that school, a lot of, a lot of competition to join that school. Why? Because it's, uh, let's say, just, let's say, take huge megapolis like Moscow. 10 million people live in Moscow. And uh, in Moscow, we have probably two or three schools high-end like this, no more. And 200 million people in the country. And let's say how many thousands of artists who want to join and to be an artist and get that high-end, uh, high excellent education. Thousands of people. So when you go to there, you, you have to show your artworks. You have to show your skills, your education, and you have to pass it through examination. So when you compete, uh, you, you, you have to take some tests in art, in, in uh, drawings, in composition, in paint, in uh, art history, in uh, language, in a uh, little bit in philosophy. And every test, you have, you have to have excellent grades. If you don't have excellent grades, you just lose. That's it, because school has to choose uh, the, the most excellent person to study. Uh, you have to show real paintings, not photographs, not for portfolio, real paintings. Uh, so I, I, I take my paintings, I put them in a train, put myself in a train, travel three days. It's a big, Russia is a very big country. So from south to Damascus, I travel about three days in a train, uh, take some taxis. So show the paintings, real paintings, to the persons who are reliable, who make making decisions. So they can allow it to put you compete. A lot of guys show their paintings, it doesn't matter. They, they can see the paintings and they say, no, no, we cannot accept you. We cannot accept you even to try compete. So first step, you have to show the paintings 
and they can see the paintings and probably they can see some potential inside. Uh, they can say, yes, we can allow you to start competition. In Russia, in Soviet times, artists cannot paint even human being or any cityscape or landscape or any nature. It was against uh, religious rules. Simply, I can have consequences. For example, if I paint something like I paint now in Russia, back in Russia, I could be arrested. It's simple as this. Why? Because I don't paint some stupid portraits of some proletarian guys or some party propaganda. Uh, what they actually tell you to paint. A KGB guy come to you and say, okay, you have to paint here Lenin or here some Karl Marx and here some revolutionary guards or whatever. And uh, of course, a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, I paint it. And they paint, they got their salary and that's it. But if you don't do it, you don't paint, you paint something else, you, it, very simple. They can arrest you, they can abuse you in jail, torture. It's very simple like this. Can spend, let's say, 10, seven years just for nothing, for saying something, or paint some paintings, or create some music what doesn't suit to the music of communistic taste. I just have to change my situation around me so I don't want to go to prison. Why? Because I want to paint certain paintings. It's simple as this. So I moved to the United States, and amazingly, I never was arrested for my paintings. <laughs> Even more, I was appreciated. Here, public start like my paintings. Hi, Barry Chapel, back with you, folks. Some of the oldings I showed you tonight. I'm going to tell you what I believe. Can't prove it, but I believe some of these oldings, like this large one right here, I think that's a half million dollar oldig. I think the only reason it's not is enough time hadn't gone by. His innovations to Russian art and to geometrical Russian romanticism is just off the chart. I mean, he has created a whole class himself. And I, I'll tell you what, here's what I want to do. I want everybody to walk away with an Oleg if you can. Look at that. Every stair-stepping of color, Ashley. This is one of the greats, BC 2269. Now look, I had this up last week, if I'm not mistaken, at 7200. Is that right, Ashley? Yeah, my birthday. Your birthday. No, you can't be that old. You were born 7,200 years ago? <laughs> oh, July 2nd. I had this up at $7,200. It's worth 20 times that, in my humble opinion. Retail on this. <laughs> I think... This is a million dollar painting. Enough time hasn't gone by or half a million. I think someone's daughter, son, grandson, granddaughter, whoever ends up with this, you're going to be very, very, very happy. But I'll tell you what, Ashley, I showed them all six of my Olex. Do you have a notepad? Yeah. I am going to work you deals like you cannot believe tonight. If you're on the cusp about getting an Oleg, let me tell you a couple of things. In the, I've been on TV now 32 years. I'm in my 32nd year. Some people consider me a founder in live TV shopping. Not pre-recorded, touch it up, change things, but coming to you live. I know there's other channels here and there. One of them I'm not even going to mention, but they are so, oh. Can I tell you one thing about the other channel? Because I'm not going to get in trouble. You're going to get in trouble. They sell coins like I do. But they insist, like on a 
coin like my 1925 in 6.6, six, like this one, Wilson, they insist on a, what would that be percentage wise? It's, uh, it, it's like this, um, Ashley. Let's say they paid a thousand for this coin and you can't buy this coin for a thousand, it's a lot more. But if they had paid a thousand, they put it up for 3.8 times the price. So, uh, I'm sorry, 28, uh, 2.8 times the price. So they put the coin up, they got to make 2,800, they got to get their thousand back. They put the price up for 3,800, Patty. Can you believe that? I sued them and won. I don't work there anymore. I can't do that. That's crazy. That goes against everything. But they hide behind you with you. I wrote all these books. Nobody bought them, but I wrote them. But anyway, I don't do anything like that. And that's why I've been on TV. Look at that. 32 years. I have a price in mind for this or that or any of my six Oleg's and Wilson what I'm going to do without letting it touch the glass is move back whether it's this one or the wave or yeah move it move it behind me yeah no put it right over here I am going to work someone a deal of deals. And I got prices. This is my Halloween special. You're going to regret not buying one tonight because they will never be this cheap. They never will. I, I, I put that on my Facebook page and I mean it. Here's what I am going to do, Ashley. Depending on what size they want, let's say... They want the wave, one that Oleg said was one of the hardest paintings he ever worked on. We had the wave up for 7,200. No, no, not tonight. Oh, Ashley. I got a price on that. That one on the screen right now, the rose, message through the rose. That is... I got a very special price. That is so cheap, I'm scaring myself. I just wrote it down. All right. Oh, I can't do it. And, oh, the wave. No, yes. Folks, Ashley, please do not flip out. I can't show this on TV. If you call, now these are just three of the six, but look what I'm talking here. You believe that? Oh, just three of the, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, is that cheap? Do you need your glasses? No, that is cheap. I told you this is a Halloween sale. Yeah. Yeah, look at look what I priced that one at. This is this one? Uh, yes. Oh, and that one's the... Yes! <laughs> but they got a call. You got a call. And don't give out the price unless they call. Unless we can telep... Uh, ESP. How do I send it through them through ESP, Wilson? It's called ESP, right? I might have to astro travel to get to you. Yeah. <laughs> Patty can't believe it. Yeah. Wh which one? Oh, hey, which? Wh let me let me see the other two, cause I got a, I got a price. But folks, <laughs> I got a price so cheap, and this is one of my favorite ones of the show. I never compete with customers, but because this is. Modestly sized at 36 by 36. I'm going to own this. Never compete with customers. But if you don't take it, I am because 
Wilson, the eye contact, the hand gesture, everything, the colors. I got prices here. And I need another, I need my pin back. Okay. Which one is talk? Abstract talk. Oh, 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 oh. Watch this. This is so cheap. I'm losing money. No one ever believes you. But I am. And love dance. And hidden. Hidden. What was the last word of hidden? And that's a monster painting when you talk to Oleg about hidden feelings. These were all up for 7300 72 I have lowered and slashed. You got to call. You got to call. And I'm going to, uh, yeah, I've done the amazing here. Oh, you did that on purpose, coin. Folks, Barry Chapel coming to you live. I want to talk to you here. This is one of the greatest artists I've met in my 32 years live on TV. And I have met so many great ones. I have met some that are no longer with us. I have met some that, eh, I met Leroy Neiman when he was alive. I, I met other, yeah, Lee Renning. But anyway, I've met a lot of artists. Oleg Javetin is one of the top three most talented artists. He has done the impossible. Do you think it's easy being born poor in Uzbekistan and relying solely on your mind to get you not only a four-year degree in Uzbekistan, but a master's degree from the world-famous Surikov to work for Collector's Editions at the time, the, one of the biggest art publishers on the planet. I have six of the greatest works. I have, you're not going to pay 7300 7200 You're not going to pay 6500 You're not going to pay 5900 Please call. I can I I don't know how if I can guarantee it. I can tell you everything I know in my fiber tells me that Oleg Javet is one of the world's greatest artists and they're already worth. You know, one of his paintings, uh, and he was so so be careful when you tell this was four years ago. Someone that works for the Kremlin picked out through one of his agents a piece that Putin or somebody in the Kremlin wanted. And he says, Barry, do not say that on TV. Why? He says, I don't know. I'm just worried. But they love his work everywhere. So please, I have prices. I have never offered them this cheap before. This is as good as it gets times 10. There are certain paintings in life. They are here. I have six of them. I have priced them, some of them, two of them, at my cost. Please, take a look at some of them, Wilson. Pan them, show them. Ashley, let's let them see them because I have slashed the price. And Ashley, the first person that buys an Oleg tonight I am going to frame it for free and ship it for free. And something like that huge one right there, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg, Ashley. I've already lost a tooth and a toe. That's all I can lose today. <laughs> yeah. You got to lose an arm and a leg, Ashley. Which one are they interested in, Patty? I want to work some deals. Sure. 
All right. Don't miss tonight's opportunity. It's as good as it gets. It's as good. good. Did she just say? Roxy Foxy? Roxy Foxy? She's getting her other job mixed up with art and corn, I mean, with uh, prime time. I will work a deal on the dance. What's the name of it? Abstract Dance? This is message through the rose. Oh, this could be it right here. Is it love dance? Which one is he interested in? Folks, I'm going to work you deals. It's taken me 32 years of doing this to get deals like this. Which one are they interested in? I got love dance. And I don't know if Barbara M, Mr. and Mrs. R in Las Vegas, Mr. T in Texas is looking, is watching. Uh, yeah, let's, 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 which one is he interested in? Oops. I hit my chair. This is BC 2269. This is good as it gets. This and the wave. Now, Mr. T, Barbara M, Mr. D, Anthony, any of my long time or new customers are watching, I'm telling you, this is as good as it gets. Yeah, I'm working a deal with you, but please realize that was a desperate price. But, hey, I'm going to honor something very close to that. And I'm glad you have faith in the Oleg's, David. I do, too. And Ashley, I'll tell you what. Want David to have that one and anybody else call I have same guy no, no. Melvin. Melvin all right uh, uh, give me a second I'm hobbling I'm don't want to step on that toe you stole my phone no, you didn't. 
Uh, I'll tell tell you. I'm gonna on the 1925 and 66. That's a tough coin to get. Thank you, David. One Oleg is gone. Now I have five Olegs left. Melvin, here's what I can do. And I will pick you out the nicest one. They're both same grade 6-6. Six, six. Here's what I can do, Melvin. And to, uh, Clear. I'll tell you what I can do. For Melvin, and tell him this is so cheap. Oh. Yeah. On the 1925 and 66, I just quoted a price. You're going to go, wow. And... Those are 1927s. The 1925. It's a tough coin to get. And if it was me, Melvin, I would go with... Where is the other 19... It's a 27. It's got to be the last coin, right? Yes. Oh, they're the same. Oh, I'd go with this one. Can he take it at that price? If he says, and I mean, I only have two, and they're harder than heck to come by. Thank you. That's why they're encapsulated in plastic that cannot be broken or heated out or anything else. No, no, that's not that's not one of his. That Yes. There's another one or two on the floor. Really? Well, there's another. Yes. <laughs> that's Yes. The swan is still available. Oh. You know Wilson, tell everybody, tell them, tell them what I'm thinking, tell the operators. You know it's true, Wilson. You know it, you know it, you know it. You got to kiss a frog to get a swan. Is that true, Patty? I kissed a lot of frogs and didn't get a swan. Nah. Okay. What do they say? I am down to five Oleg's. Okay. Now, does Melvin have a few Oleg's? Melvin, Barbara, Mr. T, Mr. and Mrs. R. Where's Randy? Randy, this is for you. The, Mark, this is one of the all-time greatest, the Fusion. It is 59 inches by 64 and a half. This, in my humble opinion, someday will be many, will be a, a million and a half bucks. He has done things in this painting that defy logic, and he has told a story that changes Every time you look at it the next day, it's unbelievable. I had this up at 73 or 7200. Call me. I got a special price. Call me. This one right here. And what I'm going to do, Wilson, is just have you maybe turn the camera. I don't want it to touch the glass so I put it up against here to that one right there Wilson this is one 
that Oleg spent so much time on. Oh, it's not clear. You're right. Look at the face in the face, Wilson. It's called the wave. And he wanted those waves to move. And not only move um, in the sense that you see movement, but the story continues. The story these two ladies are telling you as they ride the wave. I had this up for 7200 It's going to be a lot cheaper. Please call me. And I want to thank everybody that's watching. Now it's blurry. All right. Real fast, Matt. Let's put Oleg Part 2 on. Then I have other art I'm going to be getting to. I got the abstract dance. I got everything, but take a look at Oleg Part 2. Actually, I live here in the United States about 17 years. Why? Because I was invited to work here. I was invited to work here, and it's a very strange story. People saw my artwork actually on the street when uh, when Soviet Union was strong. It was not allowed any private enterprise. I, I start showing my artworks right in the street. And some entrepreneurs, uh, some American Russian entrepreneurs saw my artwork, they invited me here. They invited me here in, in the United States. And I came here in 1990. I didn't speak any language at all, any English. I had zero dollars in my pocket. And this is why that country is great. I start work and I start have success. My subject matter is very simple, very simple is uh, I paint mostly romantic paintings. I paint appreciations to the good relationship between people. That's it. Most of my paintings, it's a female and male. And male sometimes give her a letter or a flower. She can read the letter or see the beautiful flower. And she can appreciate his honest suggestions to, to her. Very simple. Why I like that? I tell you why. Because I don't want to produce any negativity. It's already so much negativity in our world, in the movies, in the paintings too, in the music. I try to work in that areas, but I don't want to do it anymore. I tell you why. How many years are I going to live? Maybe another 40 years, maybe 30, no more. After all my life I work in, I want to keep some paintings in public, public going to keep the paintings in their collection as something positive. So people, when they look, they have to have pleasure from, from what they look at. They have to have pleasure. Yes, we have negatives, a, lo a lot of negatives around us. But I believe if we move our attention to more positive, everybody as a society, we're gonna have positive. It's simple as this. Uh, through the deep psychology, we as a humans, a lot of us don't have a simple one nature. Everybody, 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 even simple workmen somewhere in the factory, we all have deep psychological difference, differences even inside us. Each person sometimes can have two or three faces. It doesn't mean that person liar, or it doesn't mean that person a bad person. No, no, no. It's a sophistication of our, any human being. Uh, it's a sophistication of our internal psychological depths. It's uh, multidimensional, multidimensional of any human being.
art it's uh, one of activities uh, close to the intellectual life of the human beings why it's important i tell you why it's important because we are human beings we are not animals <laughs> I think the art is the highest expression of human brain in any positions, in literature, music, or visual arts, or mathematics. Mathematics, the high-end mathematics is art too. It's very important because we are human beings. It's just one thing what divides us from rest of animal kingdoms. If tomorrow human beings decided to save that planet, they can save that planet. If tomorrow human beings decided to destroy that planet, they, they can destroy that planet. The difference, simple lion or simple monkey or chimpanzee, they cannot do that. Uh, but we are, we are humans, we have tremendous power in our hands. And everything belongs to us, to our decision. Art is just one side of all that intellectual powers. That's why it's important. Human beings can have different pleasures. Uh, psychological pleasures, pleasures from music, uh, physical pleasures through touch, pleasures from food, pleasures from relationship. And art is another area where people can get huge pleasures. Tremendous pleasure, especially if you understand. If you can teach yourself how to appreciate art, you can get a lot of a lot of pleasures from it. You can see some beautiful painted details or expression of, on a face or combination of colors or combination of colors and textures. You can have huge pleasure for, for your mind and for your eyes. Uh, enrichment, pleasure, it's just pleasure. It's why uh, uh, Medicis in the past, in the 15th century, they were not stupid. They pay a lot of money to uh, Raphael or to Michelangelo to paint something good, something good. Because we have such a short time live in this world, the longest life is about 100 years, no more. It's nothing. It's 100 years. Some people live 50 years, 30. My little brother was killed in a car accident. He died when he was 33. Very young guy. Uh, we have such a short life to spend that, so my, my philosophy, try and enjoy every minute, everything. Try and enjoy every hour. Don't go into any stressful situation. You don't need to. Try and enjoy, try to make your life happy. Try to make your life happy. That's it, this is my philosophy. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna make a lot of money, it's good. If I don't make a lot of money, I make a little bit of money or no money at all, it doesn't matter, I have to paint. I just cannot do anything else. Melvin, you've been a great customer. And even though this, uh, yes and yes. Yes, I'm going to frame it for you. Yes, you're going to have it in the time frame we just uh, mentioned, Ashley mentioned, but please realize this is one, you bought a lot from me. This is the greatest purchase. It really is. This is a modern day Kandinsky. I mean, this is as good as it gets. So yes, Melvin, I think this is sold to Melvin, isn't it? I just said yes and yes, so we better take it down before somebody else calls. I don't wanna get Melvin mad. That, I believe, is sold. Now, I am down to three Oleg Javetins. And I got it. 
I just want to make sure Melvin's got that last one because that is one of the best paintings I've ever had on this planet. So you, you'll confirm that? Folks, I got it. Right here. Is that okay? Yeah. Wilson? Through the waves. This is also. I started tonight with six. I have three Oligs left. The world of art is changing a lot. I've seen a lot of changes in the 32 years on TV. I've seen a lot of changes to the coin business. I've seen a lot of changes everybody has to so many things. But this, with all the geometrical shapes, this is one that Oleg talked to me specifically, this and fusion about stair-stepping the colors so the story continues. In other words, you see it. You look at it. It's on your wall. You pull up a chair. You look at it all day. You get up the next day. You, well, I didn't. Confirm. Thank you, Melvin. Thank you. I am down to three Oleg's. This one I had up for 7,200. It lists for a hundred and some thousand. I gave Ashley a very, very, very special price on this painting. Those faces in faces, the stair stepping of color to create motion. And as Oleg would tell you, so the story continues. Unlike a Surikov, showing you what a great battle scene looked like, I want to show you the story continues. The next day you look at it, you will see more. They will talk to you more. They will tell you more about what is going on. Oleg is 59 years old. He's been painting since he was a little kid. Master graduate of the Surikov. I went to the Hermitage in St. Petersburg in 2012. It was a lot of fun. I touched the dance by Matisse three times. It moved the third time and I ran. <coughs> All right, I walked quickly out of there. I touched not one but two Vincent Van Gogh's, Wilson. Yes. The Russian guard, they were ladies, they didn't seem to care, and I'd always make sure they were looking away. You could have easily have seen an Oleg Javet in there. Oleg, the Surikov is in Moscow. The St. Petersburg Academy of Fine Art is in St. Petersburg. This is one of Oleg's greatest paintings. He wants you to see through the waves. He wants you to see those waves move. He wants you to be able to see and get the rest of the story. He says if you look at it, he has done everything in his power. So this painting, the next time you look at it in the same place, the light might have changed just two degrees, two percent, but it will tell you a different story. It will continue the story. The faces in the faces, the hidden feelings. It's talking about hidden feelings. Ashley, put up hidden feelings. This, folks, if you have not bought, hang on one second, Ashley. I'm just going to lower this right here. Wilson, if you have not gotten an Oleg, I don't see how this is not a million dollar painting. 
I do not see how, and they can't guarantee it. But look at the hair. Just look when the light hits the hair as she rides through the wave. Look at that on the screen, Ashley. Look. Look, look, look. Wow. That is a stair stepping. That is everything a master graduate of the Surikov knows how to do. What? Oh. Yeah, I think you were showing your leg off there. Did you see that, Patty? Oh, she's flirting with me. Uh, I don't think Ginger would like that. Ginger's my girl. Even though the dog, the dog noticed when my toenail fell off. This is absolutely incredible. He painted this all in a cube, Wilson. This becomes a cube. You see the top of the cube and the other two sides. He used everything he learned at the Surikov to create the texture. Then the eye contact, the face inside of a face, meaning that he might have a few hitting feelings, but not as many as some would think. She, with her blue eyes, is gazing at him. It is everything one of the greatest artists in the world knows. I had this up for 7200. This is BC 2268. I will take less. I have three Oligs left. Hang on. I got four Oligs, right? Three, hang on. I got the dance, the wave, the hat. Yeah, I got four Oligs left, please. This one is one of the, that is stunning. 2268. I had it up for 7200, I'm gonna take less. And folks, this is one of the most provocative paintings Oleg has painted. He was explaining this a couple weeks ago to Ashley and me about how he obviously wants this woman. She wants him, but she's got to be provocative about acting like she doesn't want him. Now, do you see all the texture here? And Wilson, I'm talking right up here. Look at that. Completely textured in putty. I had this up at 7000 I got a far better price. I have four... Love dance. love dance is how you say it. It's not just love dance. Patty, how do you say it? No, how do you say it, Patty? Love, love, dance. love dance, yes. And she's being provocative, saying maybe. I'll, I'll, I'm going to reduce the price on this. I have four Oleg Javetans left. The wave should have been sold. And folks, I don't know what else to say. Please, if you're out there, Mr. T, Mr. A, Barbara, Mr. and Mrs. R, Randy, and I'll be honest, this headdress is something from Uzbekistan lore. This one right here is BC 2263. I don't know anything about Uzbekistan folklore. Do you, Wilson? I will sell this at a discount. Look at the eyes. One has her eyes shut. The other's bright, open. I'll work someone a deal. 
on this one right here. This is abstract talk. So call me, folks. I have four Oleg's left, and I'm going to move on. If anybody wants any coins, I have 1927 and 66. I have 1925 and 66. I have 1927 and 64. And I have the Swan. And first early release MS 70, the, the highest grade you can get. Early release. Look at that. But anyway, I want to thank everybody. But we are entering a weird time. Also, I have a $30,000 Jang bronze. But every time we lift it up, <laughs> Ashley's got. All right. Ashley, I can sense it. Someone wants to buy hidden feelings. And Ashley, Wilson, go back to hidden feelings here. I have a price that is so cheap it cannot be set on TV. Ashley, yeah. only say this out loud if someone calls and asks the price. Okay. And when they ask the price, you got to whisper it. Uh, no, but look how low I'm talking. I am talking. This is one of my favorite paintings. Look at that. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I probably paid more. Yeah, it's sizzling hot. Patty, what are you doing? What are you watching on your phone? I saw two movies over the last month. One I couldn't stop thinking about. And I barely can stop thinking about Roy Scheider and beautiful, beautiful blue eyes. He died 12 years ago, and that should win Best Picture. And then I saw a stupid movie called The Secret Life of a Cheerleader, and my dog couldn't stand it. Couldn't believe. Women taught and treated each other like that, Wilson. All right, camera two, I have just given Ashley a very, look at this cube. I, I mean, I'm looking at it. I want to feel the top of this painting. He painted this so well, I was actually reaching for the top. I didn't even realize that's part of the painting he did such a good job. I just gave Ashley a price so cheap she could only whisper it to you. Unless they're calling from Australia or China, then you got to yell. Okay. Last call on the four Oleg's. And for anybody out there, uh, can you take this hidden feelings down? Because I got, a, I got one last big special. On this one, and then I'm moving on. Give you an update on some stuff that's going on in the coin world. Through the waves. Look at that. 42 by 60. Three feet, six inches by five feet. This is a monster of a painting. 
this is the one he see that when I ask him about certain paintings, if you don't, hey, great shot, Wilson. All right. I had this up at 7,200. Watch this, Ashley. Oh. Uh, Oh, I can't. I am. I am. On this one, Ashley, you got to whisper it. New, new, new bottom dollar price on Through the Waves right over here, Ashley. Let me hand you this. Ashley. New, new, new price on this one. Even less. Last painting I'm going to sell. I am going to move on to some of my coins. To some of this. Look. That, yeah, that's unbelievable. Oleg talked about this painting at the dog park with me and Ginger. I asked him about some of these paintings, and he says, Barry, you're a smart guy. Through the waves, you got to look at it uh, for eight, nine, ten days, because you will see the story continue. He, this is one of his favorite all-time paintings. He said he didn't even think he could finish it, so it talks to you, and he did. I, I even lowered that and lowered that and lowered that. So I want to thank everybody. I still have a few minutes left. I want to want to sell some gold coins. Got some Marcel Mooleys. I got a baby Mooka. All right. This as it gets. Is that Sue? That's Susan? Hidden feelings. Yes, I lowered that and lowered it and lowered it. Well, she's being a little provocative. Which two? This? Is this Susan we're talking to? No, it's Sue. Sue? It's Sue. <laughs> Sue! Well, this is hinted feelings. I lowered it and lowered it and lowered it. And what makes this so impressive is the texturing of the canvas that Oleg did on this. When you look at it, it's completely textured. That cube comes up. I mean, I was trying to touch the top of that cube, Wilson. He did such a good job. You're going, okay, I'm just going to show him where the cube is. And it's actually painted so well. So we got that, and we got the wave, if I'm not mistaken. All right. She wants a combo price. All right. Hang on. I don't want anything to touch. Okay. Good behind the back catch. Ugh. Note to self. 
Don't do that again. You stay right there, hidden feelings. I got some hidden feelings about you. Okay. This is going to be so cheap that if any, all right, for both, can you hold that down? This is for both. Okay. It's unheard of. It's unbelievable. This top one, either one of those in my humble opinion, are million dollar paintings at some point. This is Oleg Javetin for both. I just sold her two for what I, for half of what I was going to sell one for. She says yes. Sue from Oregon. What? It's Sue from Oregon. Yes, Sue from Oregon. I love Oregon. I graduated from Southern Oregon State College and they changed the name to University of Southern Oregon. I got my four-year degree in Ashland, Oregon. I got my master's in Nevada. It's a hell of a deal, excuse my language. I just lowered them beyond cost. I just want to make a sale because... Okay. Yes. And Oleg makes a big point to sign it on the front and the back. Okay. And when you ask him why, he says because of auction houses. And this one is right here. See that, Wilson? What'd she say? Oh, she's, she's, What'd she say? Hi, Susan from Oregon. Oh, Susan, thank you. I've had, hey, Susan, I've had a tough day today. Uh, no, 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 come back over here, Wilson. Wilson, back over here. I lost my big toe toenail today. And I lost my tooth. And I went to the dog park with Oleg yesterday. And he was a riot in his own way. What'd she say? She said, there you go, because she, she, she wanted to see the signatures on the front and the back. Yeah. Okay. She said you're going to make your day better. Oh, thank you. And obviously, right here, Wilson, the one on the front is as good as it gets by Oleg. He just leaves no doubt in anybody's mind. And I, Sue, I just gave you a price that is unbelievable. And Hidden Feelings is one of the greatest paintings I've ever seen Oleg paint. And I just cut the price down for her. It's unbelievable what I offered her. This is the one Oleg was talking about at the dog park with me. How, if you look at this painting, the same wall, the next day, You're going to show what right now? I'm going to flash this. So you got to quit flashing, Ashley. Uh, you 
And you showed her the great one on the front. I did. Okay. Wilson, I keep getting these notices of potential spam. Do you think there's really a spam family and somebody named one of their kid potential? That would be mean. That's the best deal. Here, I'll show you something. Uh, 2022. 2022. He spent all year and he made a big. Yeah. He said, Barry, this is why you haven't seen me. I have been working on these nonstop for over a year. And Susan, Sue, take a look at this. That's Ashley with Oleg. And Sue, she wasn't, she wasn't even, uh, she just ran over to him and says, you know, my, you're my favorite artist. You really are. There's so many artists here, but you're my favorite artist. I've seen a lot of art, but you're my favorite artist in the whole world. <laughs> That's what she said. And this one is the one that Oleg talked to me about at the dog park with Ginger, about how you will see something different every day you look at this. Yes. I will for Sue. Okay. Is this a deal? Yeah. These two are sold. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. All right. And I want to thank everybody tonight. I am down to the last two. And thank you, Sue. Yeah, you're getting Ashley's favorite. This is a very abstract piece by Oleg. It's more of showing feelings. It's called Love Dance. He was in Hemet, uh, and it was 112 or 110 degrees. He said when it cooled down, it was 106. And he had seen something on TV uh, or something somewhere where a girl was being a little provocative and he says, no, 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 that's not how you show it. This is how you show it. This guy is crazy about her. She likes him, but she has to act like maybe I'm not liking you, even though she is. Have you ever done that before, Patty? Can you do it well? Juliet, can you do it well? You can't. You just go and I'm in love. Yeah. And in the rare case that the ambassador to Uzbekistan might be watching. 
Yeah, that's all. These are the last two. This is Uzbekistan folklore. Those are the last two. One is called Love Dance, but you can't just say the name is Love Dance. Is that correct, Wilson? You have to pronounce it right. Love Dance. Yes. The one on the ba bottom is called Abstract Talk. That is a headdress from the... Uzbekistan folklore because Oleg was born in Uzbekistan and I don't know if the Uzbekistan ambassador might be watching in New York California or I doubt they can see me in Uzbekistan these are the last two. And I got 14 minutes left. And I want to thank you. Now, I want to move over here. Wilson, I'm going to the coins. This is 1925. All right. In three years. This is 103 years old. Well, it's not 103 years old. It's 97 years old. This is graded superb, gem, brilliant uncirculated by PCGS. For some reason, 1925s, it's really hard to get a 6.6. Six. It's hard to get any of them in uncirculated condition. I have two 1925s. An MS66, superb, gem, brilliant, uncirculated. You can see the sun rising over the new country. Look at that, every ray sharp. And look at Miss Lady Liberty. You can see every finger on the torch. You can see her toes through the sandals. That's how you get an MS-66. I also have a 1927, an MS-66. And I have a very special coin here, the Swan, early release. 2022 Australian love swan. No, I don't know if it's a love swan. Look at that. Highest possible pneumatic grade MS-70 early release. They did not make that many of these coins. And I believe the entire edition was sold out the very first week of issue. Give me a call if you are interested in. That's one ounce of 9999 fine gold. 49 fine. What's that bottom coin that looks silver and it's not? It's the glare.
There you go. Wilson, you know what one of my favorite shows is? And I watch it every night on Me TV. Perry Mason. Yes. So I drive home and Ginger, my rescued hound dog, and myself watch Perry Mason, then the Twilight Zone, then Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. There's a rare Perry Mason where he actually lost a case. Yeah. I got nine minutes left, folks. I have some very rare coins there. And Ashley found a, a very small uh, Jack Solomon Jr. printed Alphonse Mucha. And I am going to put this up right now. Yeah. Ashley, where did you put that little tiny Mucha? Yeah. Oh! Man down. Hang on, Wilson. Just keep that shot. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. All right, I'm going to put that right here. Now, this was done by Jack Salman Jr. and the Alphonse Mucha Foundation. You see that Mucha chop mark. It is 2206. Right there is the Alphonse Mucha chop mark. And Jack Salman Jr., before he died, I got to spend a day with him and Yaakov Agam, the artist. And Carolyn Solomon, this is at Jack Two's Gallery in Las Vegas, said it was one of the best days Jack had had in years. And he was telling me how this is such an anti-counterfeiting watermark that the Mooka Foundation put him through heck and back to invent this, it cannot be forged. Now, this one, and Patty, what does it say the title of that is up there? It's what? Oh, Museum Edition. Muka Museum Edition. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, Someone, it's a baby mooka. You, you got to take care of the little baby mooka. Watch this. $189 on the baby mooka. Just feed it well. And folks, I got six minutes left. I want to thank you. I also have an R Bay original, but I want to get it reframed. Yeah, I only have two. Uh, Oleg's left. Both a little provocative. Well, one's provocative, the other is meant to be sent to the United Nations to the ambassador of Uzbekistan. Hey, that would make a great Perry Mason episode, Wilson. We send Ashley undercover to New York City, to the United Nations, where she is carrying this uh, Oleg dealing with Uzbekistan lawyer folklore and then you get there in his office and you try and kill him 
No, you don't kill anybody. Maybe it's an exploding Oleg. That's a la that little Mooka. I only have one of those. Got five minutes left. I priced that at so. Oh, which one are they talking about? I got an offer on which one? How much? Old. Yes, that Mooka, but hang on. Ashley, hold this Mooka because I got one more Mooka. You can't just have one Mooka. <laughs> you can't. Okay, this is a larger Mooka. This is a larger Mooka. And she's naked, but she's not naked. She is nude in the Greek form of nudity, BC 2207. Yeah, this. Yeah, now, Ashley, you think you can see her breast, which you can, but that is not nudity because in artistic theory, the line between her breast and her belly button form an equilateral triangle, which makes her a goddess figure, which is not nudity. I'll tell you what, this is a more expensive MUCA, but I'll tell you what, $495. It's got, oh, it's a museum edition, number six, uh, six of 35. Alphonse MUCA, done by Jack Solomon Jr., number six of 35. And I want to thank everybody. I have two short minutes left. And I thank everybody on their offers on the 1925 and 66. It's just such a rare coin. And I can't get them that cheap. I wish I could. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot more elusive. That's a good word. All right, Wilson, can you spell elusive backwards? Are you going any lower than you? On the 1925? All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, give me one second. Let me get to my calculator. Come on, what happened to my calculator? There it is. All right, here's what I can do. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. I know I'm running out of time. Clear. I got 30 seconds. I keep them online. Keep them online. Folks, I want to thank you uh, on camera too. I thank you. We have virtually sold out of our Oligs and a lot of our MUCAs. I will be back next Wednesday night. Hey, we love you. And Buford, don't kick that dog. I'll get mad at you. Oleg will get mad at you. Wilson, oh, Wilson gets mad when we talk about you, Buford. Hey, we love you. We ship fast now. Thank you. Have a great week.